I've got so many mixed emotions about this day, right? I absolutely hate this day, but in the same sense, it's the most sacred day on earth. Um, not even a close second. So I'm just gonna give you my perspective, which is all I can about this day. Cause it's what I know, what I've experienced. Um, so I'm just gonna give it to you. It's April 6, 2013 was a day, is a day that is perpetually seared into my mind. Um, it is a day in Southern Afghanistan that began like pretty much every other day. You had service members working out, you had people getting ready to go on missions, and you had a constant flow of Black Hawk helicopters coming in and out. <clears throat> And on one of those helicopters, a, uh, a, a, a beautiful young woman got off the, got off the bird. Um, and her name was Ann Smettinghoff. And she was a foreign service officer. And word quickly, quickly spread on the FOB I was at, Forward Operating Base Smart, that there was a beautiful woman on base. And like little kids, we were all looking out to say, where is she? Where is she? Um, and um, so anyway, the day, the day proceeded. And then at some point in time during that day, a really, really loud explosion went off. Um, and it wasn't a day that I was off the installation. So when that first explosion went off, I was hanging out with my, my linguist, Habibala. And... Um, I'll be honest, I was scared. I didn't know what, I didn't know what it was. It was my first deployment. And uh, like I said, I was scared. Um, and then shortly thereafter, another explosion went off. And it was like, ah, this is bad. So what had happened was that insurgents, whatever group it was, had managed to put a IED right up next to our gate. And knowing how US service members respond um, when their battle buddies are in trouble, it hurt. They run towards the explosion. They run towards the bullets. And that's precisely what happened. Um, and as that formation was going by, um, a car bomb went off. So. So a lot of people were hurt. Ward, Robles, and Santos, my three buddies, were killed. And Ann Smettinghoff, the first foreign service officer in the history of the war in Afghanistan, was also killed that day. And it was, uh, it was chaos. <clears throat> and I remember to this day, to this day, a memory that is seared in my mind again, but in the most powerful and um, I guess rewarding type of ways. For those of you who may be aware, some of you may not be aware, we have something called a, a hero flight. That when we have a KIA, um, the body is picked up. And in this instance, it was still, we, we didn't know what was going on. So you had. Black Hawk helicopter, come pick those who lost their lives up. You had the medical evacuations going out. You had Apaches in the sky, making sure, you know, providing cover. But anyway, myself and three other soldiers, um, I had the distinct honor and privilege of one of those who are KIA, of sprinting with his body, his lifeless body, covered up body. Um, and bringing him to that hero flight, which had landed at our base, the Black Hawk. And I remember, you know, and this is in the middle of, we still don't know what's going on. We still don't know if this is over. I remember two service members getting off that Black Hawk and saluting the body as we placed it on the Black Hawk. And I remember thinking to myself, you know, a few days before this, Robles who was on the, the gurney or stretcher that I had, um, I played basketball against. 
And I remember he was, he was the most ferocious defender I've ever played against. And quite frankly, he was pissing me off. <laughs> Ward, Staff Sergeant who lost his life, was without a doubt could bench press more than any human being I've ever seen in a weight room. Santos could do more pull-ups than anyone I've ever seen. That's what I was thinking in my mind. <clears throat> it was sad. You start thinking and soon thereafter, I got approached because even as a captain, I was one of the more junior, one of the more senior officers at this installation. And there was belongings that were at the scene. Uh, there was dollar bills with blood on them. Who do we give these to? They asked me this question. I said, I don't know. Um, who's got kids? So that's what we did. So we talk about this day and what it means and what this day means and why it's without a doubt the most sacred day in this country. Because we got people out there. We got families out there. We've got a military right now where less than one half of 1% is serving. We've got a recruitment issue. We've got the lowest recruiting level since post-Vietnam. We're asking a lot of our men and women. And we talk about that saying, and I hate cliches, hate them with a passion. But we say on Veterans Day, you know, a veteran is someone who at some point in their life wrote a check for an amount of up to and including their life. That's Veterans Day. A Memorial Day, we honor those where that check was cashed. It's a big difference. It's a big difference. Our way of life, things we take for granted, freedom of the press, freedom to protest, freedom to do anything you want, is on the backs of those men and women who gave it all. As I shared yesterday, and some people heard me say this, um, pardon me for being redundant, but my last time in Afghanistan, 2018, Bagram Airfield, my deployment was over, BAF, I'm sure folks have been here in this room. You're walking up to leave, um, and it's the outgoing PAX place where, again, you're getting on a bird, you're going home. You're not traveling in the country, you're not going on leave, you are, you are leaving the country for your deployment. And you walk up a set of stairs, and this is something else that I have seared in my mind. And you can slowly start to see a group of people that were beelining it to get the hell out of there slow down. And they're looking at this mural. And what this mural says is this mural is dedicated to those who lost their lives in Operation Enduring Freedom. Live a life worthy of their sacrifice. And that to me is one of the biggest callings of this day. Living a life worthy of their sacrifice. Now you can fill in the blanks. Operation Enduring Freedom is Afghanistan, Iraq, Vietnam, World War II, World War I, any conflict we have been in, you can fill in the blanks. But what's, what's so poignant and what's so profound about that moment is you can see the moment, myself included, when it hits you in the face. And you see that mural because that's the exact moment that it hits you. I am going home, but many are not. That's who we honor today. Those who are not going home. Those whose blood, tears, lives left on some distant battlefield. <clears throat> so what I would say, particularly today, in this crazy, absurd country we live in right now, where people fight at each other over the stupidest of reasons. Just remember that back and forth that we have, that freedom of expression that we have, is on the backs of Robles, Ward, and Santos and everyone else who's no longer with us because they paid that ultimate sacrifice.
there is no higher calling than those who paid the ultimate sacrifice for their lives. So today, I would say have your beer, have your cookout, but I might be out. As you're doing that, as you're engaging the, in the trivial but so important things in life, hanging out with your loved ones, doing what you do, which make no mistake about it, we should all do. Because that freedom that we so enjoy, just remember who gave you that freedom to do that. Thank you very much.